sentence. I, I, my senility kicked in again. I needed the help. Thank you, Victor. Okay. Uh, we were going to start this last week, but I think we got off on a different track that was even more important because we needed to talk about fundamentals of salvation. And sometimes I think we miss what salvation really is all about. And I think it was a good thing because it would have helped out my niece. Um, and she needed some help understanding that. And it also helped out Julie. So I think that, you know, some of those crucial things that sometimes we say, well, everybody already knows about salvation or that. Sometimes we have to get back to the fundamentals and understand about God's grace and mercy through Jesus Christ. So we, we spoke a lot about that, but. What I want to talk about today, we're going to be looking around uh, at future prophecy that in some cases has a, a lot of argument uh, because God didn't give us everything explicitly in terms of foretelling what is coming. He's given us just enough to understand that he's in control and that these things are going to come to pass. But it's not something that we need to get so locked into that it takes up all of our theological time, all of our study of the Lord. And there are some people that really get locked into eschatology, which is the study of the end times, and they miss some of the wonders and the glory and the blessings God has for us today. And I think we need to be careful with that. Not that we need to be ignorant to it, as a matter of fact. At the beginning of Revelation, it talks about that those who read and hear those prophecies are to be blessed. There's a blessing in it. So we need to know them, but they don't need to over, overshadow everything that the Lord Jesus Christ has done in his wonders. Okay. So um, we're going to be looking, I'm not going to be looking at the whole tribulation. I mean, because that's what's covered from about chapter three all the way through chapter uh, 20, just up to chapter 20. Um, and it covers a, a, a broad range of different uh, uh, judgments that are to come. As a matter of fact, three sets of seven. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about those a little bit before we get going after the prayer. But I just wanted to say, that it's, it's important to understand that even in the tribulation, guess what? God is still in control. You know, it's not, there are some that believe when the tribulation happens, God backs off and that he's no longer playing. He's kind of like, okay, I, I'm just going to let things go and let, let it just end up where it's going to end up. Well, it doesn't really end up that way. It's not like God backs off from his creation or what he has prophesied is yet to come because, hey, it's all from him. And so we're going to be looking at that. We want just a real quick snapshot about that, and then we'll jump into uh, Revelation 20. So any questions or comments on the introduction? Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for an opportunity to come together as, as your body, the body of Christ, to study your word. We ask your Holy Spirit that you would open up our hearts and minds and let us just be attentive to these words, to understand how wonderful you are and that no matter how these things get interpreted, they are your words and they will be fulfilled. They will be carried out exactly as you intended according to your plan and purpose in a way that brings you the most honor and glory. So just give us understanding as we look at these items and let us understand them in a way that, you know, there is no ambiguity in it or any way that is, you know, that we're just trying to somehow rationalize it in a human way, but that we would understand it in the way that you have designed it. We thank you and we praise you, give you honor and the glory in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, as I was saying, when we look at what the Bible has for end times, the reality is, guess what? We're in end times even now. So if you ever hear the term end times, for the time that Jesus came and Pentecost happened, 
we began the clock ticking on end times. Okay. Now, how long is end times? I don't know. God knows. But the issue is it what it points to at the end, a lot of people get focused at the 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 end of the end times or the time of the end. And that is where we're going to be looking in these areas of revelation. That is the time of the end, okay? Um, this is the last generation, as it were, the church age, the church generation, as we see the Lord Jesus Christ. It is under the new covenant. In other words, that the old covenant, the old law system, the framework of the law has gone away. Jesus has become the law, as it were, and he now is the one who paid the price for every sin that's out there. And so in and through him, we can have forgiveness of sin. We can have salvation freely in him. But as we start working toward the end of the church age, the Bible's clear that when uh, the word of God has gotten out to all people, then the end will come. So that's the key factor that starts talking about the time of the end in the end time. The time of the end is once the last Gentile or the last person in, in the sphere of God's under, you know, interpretation of all mankind has heard the gospel and that last person has come to salvation in Christ, the time of the end will come. So. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at that time. And you say, well, why does there have to be a change? Why can it always be grace? Because in this time right now, guess what? We are operating in an age of grace in terms of the price that God paid through himself in Jesus Christ. But once that end time comes, the time of the end comes, grace is going to be lifted. Okay? It's not... All of a sudden, it's about wrath, okay? God is going to pour out wrath on the earth. And it's a payback. Now, there are those that believe that there will be a rapture just before that time. That's called pre, you know, uh, pre-trib, pre-tribulation, and that that rapture will happen, that the, the church, the believers in Christ, will go be with him. There are scriptures that, kind of support that thinking okay that uh, especially in first thessalonians chapter five uh and so it's possible that it may happen there may be a rapture um now if there is a rapture there will be people uh, that are still on earth that thought they were christians right but guess what if the rapture happens those people will realize that they didn't really have a relationship with Jesus Christ, because guess what? If you if you go read the drama uh, writings of Jerry B. Jenkins or uh, Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins in the Left Behind series, it's like thirteen books, right? Um, it's it's a drama, it's a novel, uh, but he he works off of the pre-trip rapture in that set of books, and so. What he looks at is those people, maybe that were churchgoers, that uh, really were attending but never really accepted Christ. They thought they were Christians just based on works or based on their attendance at church or based on other things. But when Christ actually came in the clouds and took the church, many of them were left behind. Okay, so it's called the left behind series. And then those are the people that he says will go in, move into the tribulation, and many of those people will realize where they fell short, and they will turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, and they will accept Christ. That's his vision of what can happen. The other vision is that there is no rapture, or the other study is that there is no rapture, that there is only a second coming. That anyone that is alive on the earth at the time that the la that this message has finally reached the last person on earth, that any of the Christians that are alive on the earth will move in to the time of the tribulation. 
the time of the end. And so, and then that means that not only those Christians who truly have a relationship with Jesus Christ that are alive, but those who think they have it, but don't really have a relationship with Jesus Christ will also move into that time of the tribulation. And we, now the time of the tribulation is broken into two halves. If you, and it's prophesied, Daniel is really explicit about it, and it carries out in Revelation also. That there, it's, a, it's like it's cut in half, three and a half year mark, and then the first three and a half years are relatively peaceful, but that is when the Antichrist moves in. This Antichrist is going to be, man, he's going to be a genial individual. People are going to love him. He, he's going to be a uniter, not a divider. You've heard the old term, right? He's going to have a common currency. He's going to make everything look right. He's going to act as if, man, all religions will come under are fine. But then in the end, they're all going to have to be united under one world religion, right? Well, as we look at that first three and a half years, for most people, those who really aren't Christians, they're going to accept this guy. And as a matter of fact, there may even be some fairly shallow Christians that the Bible talks about that he may be able to deceive even the elect. Okay. I mean, he's going to be a charismatic individual. So we look at that. We know it's coming. But the issue is, He's going to suck a lot of people in in those first three and a half years. But then what we're going to see is that after that, there's going to, you know, oh, by the way, the, what's going to set that off? If you remember, I've told you about prophecy in our last prophecy where I was talking about uh, Israel in the end times. Be watching for the signing of a peace accord by the Jews where this guy is going to be central. and he's going to agree in that signing to build a temple back for the Jews. Remember, we've talked about the Jews when we were doing the prophecy of study on the Jews. Remember how their temple was destroyed in 70 AD by Titus, and they don't have a temple, but yet the majority of the Jews, well, not, not many of them really truly believe as much as they did, uh, but for those that do believe, they're expecting the temple to come back. They're expecting then the God to live back in the temple again. Remember, the Jews in the Old Testament always expected or knew that God lived in the Holy of Holies, right? And he lived above the Ark of the Covenant in between the cherubim, right? That's where God resided. Well, for the those conservative Jews that still go by the Old Testament teachings because they don't accept that Jesus was from is the Messiah from God they're expecting their temple to be rebuilt they're going to go back to the way things were they think that somehow all of this is going to be reestablished well this covenant signing is going to set that off well and it's also going to be the mark and the sign that the tribulation period is started okay so that's what we need to keep our eye out for, is there something, especially when they keep talking about peace by the Jews amongst all peoples and that kind of thing, there, that covenant signing is going to be the key issue that we look for to set that off. Now, I don't know if we'll be alive to see it. I don't know. But if we are, that's what we look to. Remember, I've always said, look to the Jews, look to the Israel for prophecy. Because a lot of it is going to happen through them. That's going to set off key factors at the end. So these are real issues that we're going to be dealing with. Okay. So once that happens, then there's going to be a period of time that everything seems to be okay. Everything seems to be honky dory. Things are getting better. The world's doing better. Uh, people are going to feel more comfortable with this Antichrist and whatnot. But then... He's going he's gonna to switch, okay? He's not going to be this charismatic guy as much anymore that people are really looking to and saying, that's the dude, man. He's happening. All of a sudden, guess what? He is supposed to die and come back to life. Well, when he dies, uh, and, and it talks about, you know, by the penetration of a sword, um, 
that he dies, the issue is, is when he comes back to life, guess what? He's not, he's not just being manipulated by Satan anymore, but he is indwelt by Satan at that point in time. And his character will change. And there's going to be, you know, I mean, we're going to, or, oh, I left out the chip, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, but part of the way also that this, this Antichrist is going to manage the world aspect, because remember, he's ruling the whole earth, is he's going to require a chip to be inserted somewhere. Well, or a mark is the way the Bible puts it, a mark, uh, either on the forehead or on the right hand. And in, in that, uh, that's going to give you the right to sell or to trade or to basically do business. If you don't have it, you won't be able to do it. But the thing is, we have to be careful, we as Christians, because Christians cannot take that mark, okay? I mean, because we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and that mark kind of obligates us to this Antichrist. And so that's a problem area. Now, there will be people that don't take it, not because they believe in Jesus Christ, but maybe they have other issues that to them is contrary to what they believe. Those people will potentially still be able to accept Christ, if you will, uh, during that time. So, but when we get to that point in time where Satan then indwells the Antichrist, man, it's going to get really ugly on earth. There are all these different, uh, uh, judgments that are going to come out you start with the seven seal judgments then it transfers over the seven trumpet judgments and then it transfers over to the bowls of wrath judgments and each gets progressively worse but when you read them in revelation <laughs> they're all bad okay i mean it is not i mean it talks about like one third of the earth is going to be burned up or you know, there's going to be uh, so many people are going to die. So many ships, a third of the ships in the ocean, ship, all the oceans are going to be turned to blood. Uh, I mean, and it goes on and on. None of these things are like, hey, that's cool. I mean, they are tough. They are not good. OK, and it's going to affect the believers as well as the unbelievers that are there in that time. There are only certain ones later on towards the end that will not affect believers okay those who are in christ jesus that have that when they receive christ they have the mark on them they have a different mark i mean we don't know what that is or how it is jerry b jenkins in his book says it's uh like a 3d mark that only christians can see one to the other i don't know uh the bible doesn't say that was i think his speculation but when you look at this and you realize these wrath issues have to happen. This is God's judgment on the earth, okay? Everybody had their opportunity. And so these are those judgments that are coming. There will still be people that accept Christ in that time. The, it, I don't understand it because I know God's kind of, you know, it's a different issue. Um, uh, so we'll look at that. And we'll take a, we'll see what all this has to bring to bear. But I mean, there, there are different arguments as to what is going to have, how that's supposed to be, how certain people can be saved. Is the Holy Spirit taken out of the world? Is he still in the world? Um, those are difficult issues. And there's a lot of argument and different study, theological study about that, those issues. Okay. But, the, but we do know that there will be Christians all the way up until the end, until Jesus takes them home. Now, if, if you believe the area that says, if you believe like Matthew 24, when Jesus was talking about his coming, he talks about at the last trump. And even in the Old Testament, talks about the last trump. I mean, the last trump, it seems to be a pronounced focal point in terms of God's return, Jesus' return. Um, so that's, in, in theological terms, that's considered pre-wrath second coming. It means that if G when Jesus comes back, he would come back before the seven bulls of wrath. In other words, at the last trumpet, the last trumpet judgment, then Jesus would return um, and take the church with him 
and then the church w- or what's left, uh, any Christians that are there, they would be taken with them. And then they would not endure those bowls of wrath. Uh, so as we look at this, uh, we see that these are things that God has in order as part of wrath. Now you say, why does God, if God's a loving God, you've heard that argument, right? If God is such a loving God, why does he allow all these things to happen? Well, God is a God of wrath, but he's also a just God. At one, at that point, the new covenant is done, okay? I mean, the New Testament, the new covenant is done because, I mean, I'm talking about the covenant, not the testament, because in the testament, we still are talking about that in Revelation. But the issue is, is that there are difficulties in terms of trying to contend with that. You say, well, then how can people be saved in the tribulation if Jesus has basically backed off or if he's not doing what he is supposed to do? But the issue is he is still active. Okay, but it's not by grace anymore uh it's it's by it's still it almost goes back to like a sense of what was in the old testament if i understand it right you know where people would still come into relationship with him and have a relationship with him but a lot of times most people get focused on the rules more than they got focused on the person who created the rules god right and that was the problem throughout the whole old testament they got so focused on the work side of it that they lost the relationship side of coming to Christ. But yeah. however it's going to be, yeah, did you have something, Martin? Yeah, I mean, going back to that time, uh, because remember, I, I mean, as far as I know, once once they implemented the, the chip or the, the mark of the beast, right, right. those that refuse to take it, they're basically going to pay with their life because if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, there's, a, there's That's right. a reference, I don't have it with me, but there's a reference uh, during that time, I think in, 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 in Revelation, it says those are the world that were decapitated. That's right. I believe that those, the, those are the ones basically that lost their lives during that time. That's so right. If you take the chip, I mean, the mark, yeah. that's it. They, 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 they're not going to be safe. That's so right. The only way for them to get saved, basically, they'll have to pay with their life because, I mean, you won't be able to buy, no sell. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I mean, that mark is going to be a determining factor in the yeah. end as to whether you live or die. You're right. Because again, I'm a guy. I mean, it, it seems like we don't, we have, we have all this, this time. Oh, I mean, it, it's bad because I have learned in one way. <laughs> now, the way you present that, say, man, this is, this is, I could, this is where I, where I, the way I have learned it before. But okay, go ahead. The Christian basically are not going to go to a tribulation. Right. But that's yeah, the way I take on that. And I know there's different, oh, God, I didn't know there's so many times from you, because obviously we don't have it together at this <laughs> time. Well, we are all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as I, I, I mean, what, what I have studied before is that the church is not going to go through tribulation. We might go, they're going to go for maybe the first three years, which, or three and a half years, which is going to be the, the soft part. Mm-hmm. But the, 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 the uh, tribulation, the church will be taken away. That means the rapture is going to it's going to be taken during that that period of time. The Holy Spirit is going to be taken away, so there's not going to be the Holy Spirit is not going to do the job that He's doing today. Now, obviously, like you said, God is still in control, and this is still His earth. But that's that's the way. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, there. See, and that's what I'm talking about. There are different views out there about you know how is God going to do it. He doesn't give us explicitly everything that is exactly going to happen the way it's going to happen. We know events that are to occur. And I'll tell you, that's the big thing is when will those who believe in Jesus Christ have a relationship with him be taken? Because actually it talks about those that go through the tribulation that are beheaded. So there are going to be Christians Remember those that are sitting under the throne? It talks about those who are sitting under the throne saying, when will we be avenged? Lord Jesus said, not yet. Hold on. You'll be avenged. Well, these are people that have uh, Christians that have died in the tribulation and have been beheaded for his name. So we know that they're going to be Christians in the tribulation. The question is, up to what point? And because, yeah, I mean, if, if you if they were all raptured at the front end 
and nobody gets saved in the tribulation, then who are the ones that were beheaded in the tribulation? So that's why I'm saying there are different arguments depending on perspective as to what's going to happen. But the reality is God's in control, however it happens. Yeah. Ted? Yeah, go ahead. Also during the millennium, right? Yeah. There are people there that even though Christ is going to be, it's going to be the king. That's right. That means at uh, that time, there will be uh, there, uh, the people who were born during that time or people is, that, that live in this earth. That's right. They have a choice to refuse Christ as their savior right. because it says at the end, yep. Satan is going to be set loose again and he's going to deceive a lot of people to go against Christ. That's right. That's Me, right. During that period of time, there, there's still time for, for, for salvation. That's and right. to refuse Christ. Yeah, so, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, when go Satan, ahead, Mark. When Satan get locked up, who who is deceiving the people on the earth at that time? It's just they um they just it's just their flesh. That's it. Yes, it is. Um, they all yeah the people when Satan is locked up, it's people's heart. Remember what uh, uh, even in remember in the Isaiah it says you know or Jeremiah man's heart is naturally wicked. Who can know it? We are still human whether it's in the tribulation or in the millennium. And the curse is still in place. And the original sin is still in place. So it is still, the individual still has a free will choice that God has allowed them to make. So even in the millennium, even with Jesus being on the throne and ruling there, people can still opt to reject him, even in the millennium, yes. Those are the ones outside of the building. Uh, when I said, I mean, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> ones outside. I said the building, New Jerusalem, right? Yeah, yeah. they don't want to go. Yeah, or or they try to fake it, you know, um, oh, as if they're going to fake God out. But, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, and those, those are some arguments about, well, uh, it, it talks about in the millennium that even the young person, you know, will live to 100 or the person basically it's, it makes a statement that makes it sound like if you haven't made a relationship with jesus christ you'll die at a hundred um if you're a hundred uh, if you if you come into relationship with jesus christ you'll live all the way to the end okay so it's not our lifespan is different in the millennium than it is now or in uh the the time of uh the tribulation so I mean, these are, I mean, these are different things. I mean, it is really different. I, I guess I can say. So here's the thing, Victor. I had a question, Victor. Give me one second, Victor. Let me say something. All right, Vic. I knew you had your hands up. Um, so for us, instead of worried about theology as as a book and knowledge and stuff like that, we just got to be, just got to keep Christ as our Lord and Savior, and the Bible guide us and just just be godly, be Christ-like, because right. any of these, we might not even live to see this time come started, start up. That's right. So that's right. We just good. That's what that. Well, that's what Jesus told his disciples in Matthew yeah. twenty-four when he explained all this stuff, the end times. At the end of it, he just said, "Hey, just be ready." Yeah. In other words, do what I'm telling you to do here and now. Reach out to people. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Tell them the good news lead them to repentance, uh, you know, pray for them, be, be the church, be who you're meant to be, go make disciples and, you know, teach them and bap I mean, baptize them and teach them and everything. That is what we need to be doing. And when the end comes, I mean, we don't need to be unaware of the end, but we don't need to be so locked up in it. Uh, Victor, you first, and then Martin, because I think Martin has something to say. Too. You're talking about the mark. Yeah. Today. Yeah. They want you to carry a special card, knowing that you already got the shots, etc. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people are saying, "No way, you're not getting our information on this card." But uh, we'll. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, it's sad. It's sad <laughs> that people get locked. I mean, some, the mark, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's it's amazing what people will get locked into saying, "Uh oh." As a matter of fact, I've even heard, "Hey, if you get the vaccine, you're getting a chip in you." But these are Christian, Ted. Yeah. I have friends that I've called, and these are Christians. Oh yeah. That's they, I'm not I'm not doing it. I, I read the Bible and it says 
So I, I wouldn't get in an argument with them. I just say, brother, that's your family. You got to, did you pray on it? Yeah, I prayed on it. And God told me, I said, like, okay. So he's telling us different things right now. Use, you know, wisdom, wisdom, yeah. Yeah. wisdom, yeah, wisdom. But I want to make sure when the time do come, I recognize it. Like yeah. you're taught, we recognize what, because I know that devil is a slick, he's a slick oh, guy. He is. So we, 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 we're not going to see it coming. Yeah. By the time we realize it, smack right in the face. Yeah. Yeah. I hear go you, ahead, Martin. Yeah, Martin. Go ahead, brother. No, I just want to clear one thing that when we are here with, with Christ, who's going to reign for a thousand years, you, we, it's not the Christian that's going to be deceived. We got that. We got that clear. We, the Christian right. already have a glorified body. They can they cannot be deceived anymore. This is that's it. Right. That's so right. it's those that were born during that time. So you got to get right. that clear. Yeah. Well, the, uh, what Martin is talking about is that when the, the millennium happens, and we're going to read that here in chapter 20, okay? When the millennium happens, uh, the, there will be people that come into relationship with Jesus Christ that are alive and living on the earth at the time. But see, there will also be those who will come with Christ and will rule in the millennium. In other words, those who have already gone to heaven and they will come down. Now, based on the way it, it says, it doesn't sound like everybody's coming down. It sounds like God has like identified certain ones that will come down uh, because heaven hasn't come down to earth yet, okay? During the millennium, that's still to come, okay? Because get, the earth is still cursed. So you can't bring heaven a perfect place and plunk it down uh, over Jerusalem while it is still cursed and there is sin on the earth because heaven can't abide sin, okay? God has to be separate from that sin. Even though Jesus paid the price, the, the cleansing has not happened yet. That happens at the end of the millennium. And Second Peter talks about, or yeah, Second Peter talks about that. First Peter chapter three. But anyway, so... <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. I said, hold on. Isn't during that time that says that the lot the ch a child will be will be able to play with the lion? That's right. And the lamb well, and will gonna be, be over the ass. Yeah. Yeah. But remember, okay, the way I see it is this. Okay, the enemy is in chain. So during that time, I mean, everything here is it's gonna be I mean, with crisis, crisis isn't yeah. the key. It's, it's gonna, gonna be power. nice. So it's up to it's up to Satan is is it loose that he's gonna deceive people, but doing prior to that, that's right. I oh, mean, yeah, I agree with you because see, I mean, what you have to realize in the millennium, Satan is not there, or the power of Satan is not there. It's only man's hearts that drive them to reject Christ at that point in time, and that's why people, those who are in Christ, can live up to a thousand years because death is not there. Satan is the one who brings death. That's part of his realm. And so that's why people will live longer, but yet, yeah, I don't know. But to me, I, that's something that you, we could discuss both ways, but because you do hear that some people die, but it sounds like the people that don't accept Christ are the ones that die. So I don't know, but, but yeah. I mean, these are difficult issues. I mean, I, it's not real clear as to exactly how, but these are things that are yet to come. But I'll tell you what, the beauty of it is this. Let's go ahead and share out uh, Revelation 20, because I want to want to hit some of the points there first as we get going, because um, this it's exactly what Martin's talking about now. You know, he says, uh, and this is John speaking. Uh, he says, then I saw an angel coming down from heaven. This is at the end of the bull judgments, okay? Holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. And he sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, you know, serpent re uh, actually pointing all the way back to the serpent that tempted Eve, right? the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. The thousand years is what gets known as the millennium, okay, because millennium is a thousand, okay, and threw him into the pit and shut it and sealed it over him so that he might not deceive the nations any longer. So see, for that thousand years, 
his a power that he uses on us today through you know it's not just satan but all his angels and everything that that the, you know uh you know how ephesians 6 t- talks about that we fight not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers of the unseen realm that's what he's talking about those those powers are not going to be there satan is off the grid okay and so he won't deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years are ended. So that is when Satan comes back, okay? That they release him at the end of the thousand years. After that, he must be released a while. Yeah, Donna. Well, um, it says Satan will be um, uh, restrained in, you know, during that thousand years. But does that mean that his uh, minions will be restrained as well, or well, he, just him? Well, he's he's their leader. So right, I, I know. But but uh, will the rest of the Ephesians oh no, they're not. Uh, only he is going into the pit. But without the leader, they are sidelined. In other words, because Jesus now takes over the throne, they are sidelined. So they're the ones that'll be still tempting people, but it w- just won't be on the on the magnitude of of what it was when satan was here just like you know the shepherd goes the sheep scatter but they're still they've been they've been working in this kingdom for six thousand years so they pretty much know what to do and how to do it so if they're still here they'll still be tempting people then right uh that's i i don't know we're not told i just know that they're not being thrown into the pit and satan is their leader and so Jesus takes over the throne at some level, you know, the question is how, well, because it's all up to Jesus at that point, since he's the ruler now, the question is, what will Jesus do with all of the satanic forces? Satan's in the pit, but what will he do? Will he sideline them? Will he allow them to still be functional at some level? I don't know, Donna, that's, that's something the Bible doesn't tell us. That's a great question, Ted. I've never thought of that. Donna will come up with it. That's a great question. <laughs> oh my gosh. What what's because it says he gets locked up, but what happened to the minions? Oh my God, right. I never thought of that one. Well, those are the heavenly forces that Ephesians 6 talks about. The question is, will they still be allowed to function? Will Jesus allow it? Because now remember, it's not Satan that is, is calling the shots at that point in time. Jesus is ruler. He's calling the shots over this earth at that point. Remember, in the tribulation, it was Satan, right? And, and the Antichrist, you know, with Satan in him, right? But now Jesus takes over. He is ruler. So the question is, how much leeway will Jesus allow these, you know, heaven, those people, those, uh, those forces in the heavenly realm to actually function in his reign? It's not going to be heaven on earth yet, okay? We know that. But Jesus will be a, a far sight better leader than any that this world has ever had. So yes, I think the millennium will be a great place to be. But the issue is, I don't know how much Jesus will allow those minions to be functional in his realm. The Bible doesn't tell us. But it's, yeah, like you said, though, it's a good question. But Now, we know that this thousand years is going to happen. Jesus is going to be on the throne. He's going to be ruling. And if you go look at the prophecies about that time, I mean, there's going to be requirements. Jesus is going to levy requirements to the nations that they have to come and worship. And if they don't, there's going to be, you know, consequences. And we see that Egypt is one of those that will experience the consequences of the fact because they didn't come to worship. And so, I mean, we we just get glimpses of things that are going to happen, but we don't get the full explanation as to what the end result of those consequences are going to be. So we see that this is going on. Jesus is in control. And yeah, I mean, Donna makes a very good point because the issue is, you know, is there going to be some kind of influence that causes man to want to reject Christ? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, there will be rejection of Christ in the millennium by some people. Yes, absolutely. Ted, yeah, go ahead, Mark. Even, even though the Bible doesn't say it there, but okay. If, 
if it's going to throw Satan, oh, I suppose also like also all the demons. <laughs> okay. Well, and that's it, the it question. Be, I mean, the demons going to be operating by themselves? It's, well, I, that's see, that was my point, is Satan is their leader. Without their leader, what do they do? Will Jesus allow them to function independently? I don't know. Uh, when the Bible says that Satan is thrown into the pit, is that a collective metaphor for all of Satan and his forces? I don't know. Um, I just know that man, even without Satan prompting him in our fallen state, we still will have a desire to do fleshly things even in and of ourselves. We don't actually, you know, not everything we do in the flesh is Satan driven. A lot of it has to do just with our wickedness, our heart, our sinful nature. So, I mean, those people that are in the millennium will still have that same body and character as we do today. So the question is, they can in and of themselves reject Christ, you know, even though he's there in person, they can still reject him. So, so in your opinion, you said that <laughs> when they come down, <laughs> you said it's not the whole church that's coming down. Because I, I understood it's the whole church is coming down. Because it says they're going to be, they, they're going to celebrate the wedding. Right. They're going to they're come down and reign for a thousand years. So you, you said that now that now the whole church is coming down. I, I, I don't know. The, the Bible is not clear on that point, but think about it. How many Christians do you think they're going to be at, by that time? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if the world can support that many. I, I don't, I Wait, don't know. Go to the Where next, chapter, the next paragraph, you... Ted, where it says, then I saw thrones and, and they came down to reign with them. That's, it might give us some clues. Okay. Well, let's go and then we'll, we'll re-engage re uh, Martin there. He says, then I saw thrones and seated them on there were those whom the authority to judge was committed. So obviously there are going to be some that have authority to judge. Remember how Jesus told his disciples uh, that there would be 12 thrones and that they would judge the, you know, the 12 tribes of Israel. So, I mean, theirs was limited in scope to Israel, but, you know, he says that we will judge angels. Okay, so. I mean, yeah, there's going to be thrones there for judging along with Jesus, okay? And he says, also, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received the mark on the forehead and the hands. And that's what we talked about earlier when we were trying to determine, will there be Christians in the tribulation period? And this seems to, this seems to uh, indicate that there will be those that were Christians and that the beast had them beheaded in the tribulation period because he's talking about the beast. That is the one, you know, an identification of the one in, in the tribulation or its image and had received the mark of words on their hand. And the beast does, does create an image that they, people need to bow down to, almost similar to back in the Babylonian time when Nebuchadnezzar did the same thing with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So same kind of thing. And so we see that if they didn't have the mark and they got caught, it's like Martin indicated earlier, they were, they were beheaded, right? And it says, they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. See, now this is where the question is. Those that come, are we talking about only the martyrs that were beheaded for Christ are the ones that come and reign with Christ for a thousand years? Um, or is he talking about more? Look at this verse five. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. Now we're saying if Jesus already came for the second coming at pre-wrath, in other words, before the bowls of wrath, or some other time during the tribulation, the second coming happened. Well, at the second coming, we know that the dead in Christ will rise first, and then those who are alive will go to meet Christ in the air, right? We know that that's the definition of the second coming. And Jesus has to touch down on the Mount of Olives for that to happen. I mean, the Bible is pretty clear about that. So the question is, there is another 
apparently there's another resurrection, okay? Or is he talking about a different thing? So look, they says, they came to life and reign with Christ a thousand years. These are the ones that were beheaded. This is at the end of the tribulation or at the part where Jesus comes again, second coming, right? That could be the pre wrath But look what he says, the rest of the dead now come to life until the thousand years were ended. So there is another resurrection that's happening at the end. And so those people won't be alive yet. They will be with Christ, you know, just like Paul said, absent from the body, present with the Lord. But they won't, their bodies won't have been brought back yet. They don't have their final bodies till at the end of the millennium. I mean, this can get a little confusing, but oh. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Mark. <laughs> okay, this is where I take <laughs> I Okay, see. go ahead, brother. This is my belief then. Okay. Okay, the church comes down, right? All okay, okay. Coming down, in my opinion. At the beginning of the millennium? Yeah, the millennium, okay. because we're going to reign, reign with Christ for a thousand years. Like okay. It says there, those that are died during, during the uh, the tribulation? Yeah, yeah. They also came down. Okay. Now, the second the second resurrection that I was talking about is, the, is that the unsaved, because you remember, it's going to be judgment day hasn't passed yet. Okay, okay. Yeah, remember, you mean the great white Remember that, yeah. the, uh -huh. that the people that, are, that died the unbeliever that die, they also going to resurrect. We, I mean, we are eternal. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. We are eternal, regardless of what. So, and then come judgment that is going to come. They all going to stand in front of God. Like oh, okay, okay. The, okay. the yeah, second, yeah. the second resurrection. That's there's no power. That's, that's right. That's they, right. Yeah. The destiny is judgment. Yeah, that is the. Yeah, you're right. The second resurrection are those that were not in Christ. In, those are the ones that are in the holding area, waiting for the great white throne. They will be resurrected. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, as I'm as I'm reading my study Bible while y'all talking, kind of what he just Martin just kind of said. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. right. He's right. And so he says, "Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection." In other words, when Jesus comes back for a second coming, that's the power. That's when we get to be with the Lord God forever and ever. Amen. Right. And. But over such, the second death has no power. See, second death are the unbelievers, those who have died without Jesus Christ in their lives, okay? And they will go before the great white throne, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years. He's talking about the ones who shared in the first resurrection. That's the church, and that's what Martin's talking about. So, yeah, may, I guess the whole church will come down then. And, and, and not only that, once once judgment comes from for those people that are unsaved, yeah. they're going to be thrown the lake of fire with Satan. They're done. Yeah. 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 So, no, you're right. You're right. Well put. Well put. So then we look at this. I mean, we don't really get much of a picture in Revelation as to what happens during the millennium. We can get inklings of it in different uh, uh, books of the prophecies in the Old Testament. But... Uh, we don't get a lot here in Revelation, okay? So he says, and when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison, okay? And look what, look what Satan is going to do. <laughs> Satan thinks he's still got a last gas breath, and he's going to take Jesus out, right? And he will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth. In other words, this, this is all him and all his forces, okay? Don't think it's just Satan as an individual. I mean, we're talking about all his forces. Gog and Magog, that's, you know, there are certain theological beliefs that that has to do with Russia and that whole area up there. But I think that that was a perspective of the old earth, okay? The way the people perceived earth like back in, you know, the old times when they didn't know about North America, South America, or a lot of these other continents that they saw the world as being only over there in the European and, uh, you know, kind of like the Indian and Oriental area. Well, here, it's the whole earth we're talking about. Gog and Magog probably has a much bigger place than what this, than what those, those uh, theologians of old seem to think. To gather them for battle, their number is at the sand of the sea. So, we know that in the millennium, a lot of people are still not going to come to Christ in that whole millennium period. Because, look, he's still been able to gather a, a big fighting force. Satan still has that many, you know, that have turned against Jesus Christ. And they have joined him for this final battle, right? 
And look at verse 9. And they marched up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, Jerusalem. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. Look, Jesus ain't playing no games this time. It's not like, you know, this, it, it leads up to a battle that takes months. I mean, <laughs> it's like Jesus said, okay, you know, I ain't playing this game. It's done. So he has fire come down from seven and consumes this this battle that has you know all these followers like the sand of the sea all the unbelievers okay they all get consumed and the devil who had deceived them immediately is thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever now what you need to understand about this these verses 9 and 10 notice are there going to be any unbelievers on the earth after verse 10? No. No, they're all gone, you know, because see, God, Jesus has burned them up with that fire. All of the unbelievers are gone. That only leaves the believers and the church with Jesus Christ, right? That's all that's left on earth at this point, okay? Because Satan now has gotten rid of, he's gone. And so now the issue is Jesus can take all of those, right, up in, up into heaven with him. Because now, guess what has to happen? It's, it's like Martin was talking about, there will be the great white throne judgment. But also, once that's finished, well, let's just keep going. Let's keep going. Okay. Uh so we see that on the earth, there isn't, okay? There aren't any unbelievers at this point. There's only the church and the believers and Jesus, okay? And he says, then he says, then I saw a great white throne, a him who was seated on it. Now, the question is, where is this great white throne? I don't think this great white throne is here on earth. It's in a different place. Uh, remember in Luke where it talks about the rich man and Lazarus? and how he was thrown into a place that you could see from paradise across a great gulf fixed and see it. And, and that guy wanted uh, Lazarus to go dip his finger in water and put on his tongue because he was in torment. Well, that is a holding place. The question is, where is that holding place? Some say, well, it's in the center of the earth. I don't know. It, if it is, fine. If it isn't, fine. But the I issue is, was insane. I don't know. <laughs> I, have I, have insane. Idea. I have an idea where I think it is. Okay, go ahead, Donna. Um, I think it's in heaven because God's throne is in heaven. It's white throne, you know, all of that. You know, when in Daniel, it talks about him seated on the throne with his hair was white and everything was white. And I believe that these unbelievers that are coming before this white throne they're going to catch a glimpse of what they're going to miss. And when they go stand before God, they're going to see exactly what's going on and what they're missing and what they've done. They're going to be called to account for all they've done. And they're actually going to know what the, the, the true difference between good and evil. They're going to, that's just my own thing. So I think it's going to be in heaven. Okay. That's just my own. I mean, I don't have anything. Only because of what I've read in Daniel about the Ancient of Days and all of that stuff. Right. About Because um, Ancient of Days is God the Father, not God right. the Son. That's right. And it's got, is it, so that's the throne. That's where the, it talks about the throne and how is what, everything's white, you know. So anyway, that's kind of why I think it's going to be in heaven. But that's just my own, you know, okay. put this piece together to the puzzle and this piece together to the puzzle and it makes sense to me, but. You know, it could be somewhere else, but that's just kind of my own. Yeah. Well, the only problem. the only argument I'd have against that is that sin is not allowed in heaven. Um, all of these people that are coming up have not been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not that Jesus didn't die for the sins, but they are unclean, so they mm -hmm. can't show up into heaven directly. Um. I do agree that there's going to be a throne. Jesus is the one who's going to judge mm -hmm. um, sitting on that throne. He's because, see, he's the one that paid the price and they didn't accept it. Well, that means it would be in Jerusalem where he's sitting on the throne then. 
or Ted, it could be, um, you, um, remember the devil was allowed in heavenly realms around there. So it, like you said before, another dimension, another place yeah. in the heavenly realms, not heaven itself, because devil was a sinner. So he yeah. was up there around heavenly realms. So it could be anywhere in the heavenly places. Yeah, I mean, yeah, these are not well, directly in heaven, though. Not directly in heaven, though. Right, I know right. the devil was seated, is sitting there, uh, accusing us day and night to the father. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's at, he's able to go and approach the father, so he's able yeah. to go to heaven. He has full that's why uh, in Revelation, a couple of chapters later, it says that he was cast down from heaven. Yeah, words, he wasn't he, allowed he there wasn't anymore, allowed there anymore. Yeah, so, right. so up until that point, he's He's allowed to go up there because he accuses us all the time. And um, that's where we have to know where we stand in Christ because Jesus died for our sins and we don't have to worry about being accused. But so <coughs> excuse me, it could be in maybe in Jerusalem because that's where Jesus is going to sit on the throne in Jerusalem. Right. Yeah. So but see, you got to understand we're thinking <laughs> single dimensionally. We're thinking more like, oh, it has to be in heaven or it has to be on the earth. It has to be here. But with God, he's omniscient, omnipresent, and he's capable of being anywhere. See, God is in the third heaven, okay? Satan and his realm is in the second heaven. And we, and uh, what we can perceive on earth is the first heaven, okay? I think what happens is that satan does a zoom with god okay and they zoom and satan starts <laughs> i don't know i just know that hey it's it's not impossible that wherever satan is he can still talk to god god can still talk to him but he cannot be with him in the sense of hey i'm showing up here he can do it kind of like we do we're not together but we zoom and we can see each other and talk to each other and be just as effective in that respect. But well said, well said. So, I mean, with God, nothing's impossible and we don't fully understand his infinite realm anyway. So we only have a limited aspect of understanding. And I think that's another reason, you know, God doesn't give us more because we couldn't even begin to understand it anyway, if he was to give it to us. So, so yeah, I mean, Donna, I, I know, it's going to work out, right? Because you're right. I mean, Satan does accuse the brethren. I mean, that's his job. And, and God listens to him, whether, I mean, he doesn't necessarily say, yeah, okay, hey, I'm going with what you say. Jesus just tells him, hey, look, I died for Ted. So you can accuse him all you want. You know, it doesn't, it's not going to change the fact that I already paid the price for his sin. So, I mean, when we look at stuff like that, you realize, wow, you know, I mean, so wherever this throne is, it's going to be a place. See, Jesus can be in a place where these sinners are going to come. The father will not, but the son will. Okay. That's why Jesus is going to sit on the throne. It's possible that may be in the second heaven, not the third heaven. I, but I don't know. Then you say, well, where was the second heaven? You know, God knows. I don't know. So, so when we look at that, but we do see that the great white throne, it's going to happen. There is going to be a judgment. And this place is going to bring, you know, all of those who have rejected God from Adam all the way through to the very end. It says, then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. And from his presence, notice this, earth and sky fled away. It's almost, so it can't be on earth. It's, but it's like you could see earth from where it was at but in the process when jesus sits on the throne all of a sudden it's like everything clears out okay everything clears out it's only jesus and the throne that is center stage and he says and i saw the dead great and small this is that second resurrection that martin and i were talking about standing before the throne and the books were open you say books man what up then another book was opened, which is the book of life. Now, the books, uh, oh, here we go. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. These are known, the books that were opened that it's talking about are these books of works. Guess what? People going to hell are going to get some level of credit for decent things they've done. Now, hey, none of it is perfect. None of it is of any value 
in getting them into heaven. But apparently they will get some level of respite in hell. You know, if you've ever read Dante's Inferno, you know, he sets it up like seven levels of hell or something. And that depending, you know, I mean, that's speculation, but it's an interesting viewpoint. But the issue is the people that are getting judged even get some level of mercy, even going into hell. You know, so, I mean, God is amazing. I, I mean, I, I don't know how else to put it. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, like it says there, I mean, God is a, is a just God. Amen. Even, even though they're going to be punished, but the level of punishment is not going to be the same for everybody. That's you right. Know? Because it says there, uh, let me see here, uh, each one of them according to what they had done. That's right. Yeah. So he's going to he's going to hold them accountable for their actions, whether decent or indecent. I guess I could put it that way, you know. And it says, and the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. He says it again. Then. But notice after it's all done. OK, it's all done. Guess what? Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. Notice that death is not only the people, but death is also thrown in there. Death is a, an entity. It's a thing. It's kind of like, you know, how we use the metaphor, the angel of death. Um, it's like as if this, this negative factor that is what caused death and, you know, because remember, all the way at the beginning, when God told Adam, hey, don't eat of that tree in the middle of the garden from the day that thou eatest thereof, thou wilt surely die. At the time God told Adam that they didn't know what death was, unless God just let him understand that death was an end to self, a spiritual problem also. But the issue is, we see that when they ate of that fruit, death became functional. And now God is taking that, that entity, that death entity, and he's throwing them into the lake of fire. With Hades, that means that is the place of the, of the people waiting to be tried by the second, you know, uh, by, by the great white throne. That whole thing, there will be no more people waiting for a great white throne. So he takes that in death and throws it into the lake of fire. In other words, there's not going to be any more judgment again. This was it. This took care of everything. The price has been paid based on the fact that those people, a just God, has made his final ruling, and those people have all gone into hell along with anything that is associated with it, death and Hades, right? So they went into the lake of fire, and this is the second death, the lake of fire. And anyone's name was not found in the book of life. That's the Lamb's book of life. He was thrown into the lake of fire. Now, when you understand that on earth, there is no more sinful or negative thing on earth. Okay. Satan and all his minions are in hell. Everyone that's been judged that has rejected Christ is in hell. Now, the issue is this. There will, there are still some, there are still the church, the Christians, and Jesus are still on earth, right? But the thing is this, the earth and all of creation is still under the curse, though. Even though sin's been dealt with, we are, the creation is still saturated with the curse. And so that's where Second Peter, or First Peter chapter 3 comes in, where it says, all of the elements, let me, let me look at that. Uh, hang on just a sec. I think that's First Peter 3. And he says, hang on. Uh, I don't, I don't think. About the passage that says that when the, the, the earth uh, grows to be redeemed? No. Hang on just a sec. Hang on just a sec. Because. I, I, I want to look at this one because I think Jude even restates it, but um, just a sec here. Uh, Bible. Earth. Oh, 
I can't spell. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, Second Peter. That's why. Second Peter three. I thought I was saying that right the first time. Uh, Second Peter three. Uh, final. Hour. He says here. Uh, uh, but not. Uh, this is Second Peter three verse eight. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. Almost makes it sound like the millennium, right? <laughs> The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness and his patience towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Now, here it is. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. And then the heaven, see, when the day of the Lord is his final judgment, okay? That's when Jesus takes care of everything, okay? He's getting everything right again. The day of the Lord will come like a thief, and the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. So everything is being exposed. In other words, it's a final judgment by the Lord in fire and in cleansing. OK. Uh, and he says in verse 11, since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought we to be in lives of holiness and godliness? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolve, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are not, we are waiting, and here it is. So once he's done that, his promise is that we're waiting for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So basically, the way God gets rid of the curse is he obliterates all of his original creation, and he recreates, okay, to where we now are in the new heaven and the new earth. And when we see that ha have, have happened, then what we see, hang on just a second here, I'm trying to find where my cursor is. Uh, where is, oh, here it is. Um, when we see that, then we see that uh, after he had sent them in, uh, it, right, then he sent everybody in hell, but then he says in chapter 21, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, this is the recreation of everything, okay, into the state that it was back when he first created it, and remember Adam and Eve were in a perfect place, a, a wonderful place, well, he's recreated it without sin, that curse is gone, okay, and he says, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. That's what Peter was talking about. And the sea was no more. I don't know what, uh, somehow, I, I guess there's not going to be a sea. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if sea is a metaphor or if it really is, you know, the earth is just going to be a, 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 just a flat planet. I don't know. Well, not flat, but round, but without sea. I'm going to see. Yeah, I guess we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'd like yeah. to go back to, to uh, verse 13 again. Okay. Let me tell you, talking about a mystery, that's a mystery. <laughs> Are you, and the sea gave up the dead who were in it? Yeah. Uh-huh. No, yeah. no, uh, yes, yes. The, the, okay, the sea. Uh-huh. Right? Gave up right. the dead. Uh, Hades gave up the dead. Right. Uh, <laughs> in other words, everything. But okay, yeah, when I talk about Hades, okay, that's what people okay. So those that are not saved, that's why they go because they don't go straight to hell, right? That's right. They go to a holding place. So that's a place of, of torment. Well, it's a place of torment. Oh yes. Yeah. It's not. It's not yeah. going to be. A piece, it's not a peaceable place that they go to. Nope, nope. So those people that that died that were unsaved, that's why they went to Hades. That's right. That's right. Um, that's <laughs> when we get that picture of the rich man and Lazarus mm -hmm, in yeah. Luke, I think eighteen. Uh, that's where these people you notice where the rich fool was at remember yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's what he, they he was in torment yeah. that's that's a picture of that hades yes right. now, now so you got to see so those people that are drowned right right all the people that, that, that died during since the beginning i guess in the right, sea right 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 they're going to be resurrected too yeah i mean to to be judged yeah, now, even the sailors that were, uh, you know, buried at sea. 
<laughs> and, that is, and then it says, like you said, death. Let me tell you, that, that's a mystery because, like you say, death is is a is a, an, an identity. Yeah. Because it, it, when Adam sinned, it says through sin came death. That's right. Yeah, you know, it's saving hard for me to comprehend that because death is going to give up. It's an entity, a whole entity, a whole being onto itself. Yeah. And Adam, once they sinned, it it just jumped on them, jumped yeah. on the human race crazy. because of their sin. It's what it's crazy. It's a mystery because it is. Death is going to give his death. Yeah, Victor, did you have something or were you just waving? Read the note. Oh. We're going to leave at 5.30. We have... Okay, brother. Uh, hey, God bless you, man. You take Thank you. care. We'll, yeah, pick it up on the, uh, we'll pick it on the, up on the, uh, the recording. Okay. Well, we'll probably stop here anyway, because, I mean, I think we've still got some things that we want to kind of resolve. Yeah, this can this go area. on forever. <laughs> yeah, because I'll tell you, that's what I'm saying, is that when you read and study end-time prophecy... God doesn't give us everything. And it's easy to extrapolate because we don't think the way God thinks, do we? I mean, we don't think, I mean, God gives us wisdom through his Holy Spirit, but a lot of times we tend to want to rationalize it in a human way. But you got to understand that John is trying to put this in terms that we humans can understand. But I guarantee you that John didn't understand everything he was seeing. And he sure couldn't put it in terms that were at God's level, because if he did, if God had given him the ability to write him at God's level, none of us would even, we'd be, be like, what? You know, this doesn't even make sense. Margaret. So, I mean, he gave it to the people at a level. Yeah, Margaret. Oh, I think she's leaving. So. I mean, when we look at this, I mean, you can understand why there are so many I'm different. Not, sure. I, I gotta leave too with Victor. Okay, Margaret. God bless you, my sister. So I'll see you Wednesday night. You got it. You got it. And we'll continue in Genesis. Okay. Okay. Hi, Margaret. Good to see you, Miss Margaret. Yep. Good to see you. Have a good time. Okay, we will. Oh, you know. So I mean, as we look at this, and you can see how it's easy to go down different paths, because, I mean, we're only given a certain amount of information. How can I sign out? And we're trying to rationalize it all, you know, from a human standpoint, aren't we? Oh, uh, I don't know. Let me see if I can sign you out. Oh, she's out. Um, so when you look at that, you realize, man, alive, you know, I mean. Thank God for what he's given us. And I think the beauty is in what the result is more than it is in the functional actions that happen. The beauty is, is that we will be with the Lord forever and ever. And we are going to have, uh, you know, it's going to be no more sin, no more sorrow, no more pain. And we'll get to that in chapter 21. Because, I mean, then we see what God has prepared for us. And we can't even begin to imagine what that is. The Bible is clear about that. So, I mean, I don't disagree with anything that's been said. The issue is these are the types of things that come out when you look at end prophecy, because we don't fully understand. But if we do what Jesus tells us to do, which is just to be on the alert and to be ready, that means be right with him, be obedient to him, love him, reflect him, show him to others. That is where we need to be. And then whatever happens is going to happen because God's going to make sure it happens in his way and according to his plan and purpose, just like we've been studying in the other prophecies that have already been fulfilled. We see that each and every one was carried out according to his plan and purpose. And it's going to be no different here. It, this is just something that hasn't been experienced yet. So we don't have the luxury of going back and saying, yeah, this is how it happened. In this case, we're still waiting for the Lord to carry it out in the way that honors and glorifies him. So that's it, folks. Any questions, comments, additions, subtractions? We'll pick up in chapter 21 next week. But I tell you, 
it, I think it's an interesting thing to throw back and forth because we all see different aspects or we've heard of different ways and whatnot. But the issue is, hey, they, they are they. <laughs> yeah, the go ahead, Mark. Is, the fact is that the, the Bible has a lot of mystery. Amen. It sure does. Just like the Trinity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's not get into that, that study we, right that, now. <laughs> that we don't have to study then. <laughs> exactly. Because like we accept it. The things that are revealed belong to us. Amen. So, why we why it's secret belongs to, to the God, to God. Amen. Amen. And that's beautiful, man. That is so beautiful. Well, that's why the death is capitalized. Since when did death become an entity, like Mark was saying? Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? I'll tell you, Gene. I mean, it's, I'll tell you, I never really thought about that till later. You know, because I always just saw death as an end of things, you yeah. know, an end of human things. Um, Jim, yeah, go where, ahead, Mark. Where is it where he said Jesus defeated, I think it's Corinthians, he defeated death, sin, the devil, and hell. That's when oh. I saw that. I was like, wow, it's highlighted in my Bible. Hang on, <laughs> hang on. One of the, let's see. Well, yeah, because death is separated from Hades. It says death and Hades. It makes a point. To separate them. Yeah. Uh, try that in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 55 through 57. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15. And it says, yeah, a death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where's your victory? Where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, their death is not capitalized. Yeah, not there. I'll, when I find it, I'll text it to you. It's okay, another okay. part of my Bible that I have. When it's, I wonder it just, if anywhere else in the Bible is death is capitalized. I, I don't. I mean, there it is, but it's the beginning of a sentence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh huh. Yeah, good point. Good point. That's a good question. But I, I guarantee you, whatever it is, I mean, I, I've always kind of associated it with the angel of death because we see him uh, talked about in different areas of the Bible, you know, the angel of death. So it, it makes that, it. Is that Satan? Who huh? I wonder who the angel of death is. Well, obviously, it's somebody that God has allowed to be uh, in that function, in that role. crazy huh yeah i think it's one of the ephesians 6 kingdom minions that the angel of death because it's angels principalities and rulers of the darkness so i think death is one of those you know principalities. Well, because that's who god used in the passover remember that that the yep. angel of death was the one that mm -hmm. went and you know i mean so that's heavy i'll tell you i mean it, it that's another study in and of itself i think you know, because he uses evil to to get to um, perform his purpose all the time. Yeah, yeah. He used he used the evil people to put Jesus on the cross. That's why Jesus said, "Forgive them, because they don't know what they're doing." They really didn't know what they were doing, because it says in Corinthians somewhere that if they'd have known what they were doing when they crucified him, you know, they wouldn't yeah. have done it. So, um, God uses evil all the time. He used um, evil uh king of babylon to take to punish the israelites so you know he uses these of all the time for his for his purpose i yeah. found it ted yeah go it's, ahead, fir bro. it's first Col um colossians oh um, colossians. It said, because of hope laid up for you in heaven of which you previously heard in the word and truth but i'll go down to the study part um one five the gospel is the good news of christ victory over satan sin and death amen because that's what Jesus, you know, overcame on the cross. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sin and death. I mean, the, yeah, those were the big ones, yeah. you know, because all three of them are entities. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, God has it all under control. Is, it, is death capitalized there, Mark? Ah, no. But, uh, but I've noticed that. Anyone. But I noticed also in different translations, even Revelation 2014, if you look at it, let's look at it in uh, 
Christian Standard Bible. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on. Let me go back. I want to get back to Revelation here a second. Let me take a look here. Uh, when the beast was captured with false prophets on the Mark of the Lamb, on the throne, and these two, uh, Mark of the, and he deceived the beast captured with false prophets. Uh, and all the birds. Wait a minute, I'm in the wrong chapter. I think. Oh, yeah, I'm in 20. Hang on. Oh, here we go. Second death is like. Here it's not capitalized, but here death and Haiti. Okay, so let's look. Let's look at uh, the King James, New King James version, and see. Yeah, death is capitalized there. Death and Hades was capitalized there. Christian Standard Bible. Here they don't in the Christian Standard they don't capitalize death. Oh, okay. oh but yes, yes they do. Oh, but that's because it's the beginning of the sentence. Yeah. But the prior. Also, you'll notice in the in the King James Bible, yeah. when it talks about, you know, God as a pronoun like he, in the King James it's not capitalized, but in the New King James it is capitalized, and I actually kind of like that because I feel like it, it sets it apart as you know, like you'll talk about somebody and you'll say he did such and such when it's a capital, you know, it was God that did it, not David or somebody else. Yeah. No, and, good point. Yeah, I personally I mean, like I've capital. Liked yeah, I always like having the pronouns capitalized, but some versions don't. Even the King James doesn't. So I just kind of look at it as a reverence thing for that. But um, is Hades capitalized in that sentence yes. that you guys are talking but about? Hades is always capitalized, but depending on, and like New International Version does not capitalize death and Hades, even though Hades is capitalized. So. But what I about don't the know. New King James is it capitalized in the New King James? Yeah, in the New King James, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. See, death See, is this, capitalized. That's where I think it. Um, I've, you know, I've, I've, I don't argue with people that are King James only people. I really don't. Yeah, that's yeah. their privilege to feel that way. But I did a parallel study, you know, like in I took the Bible Gateway and I, and read the New King James and the King James side by side, yeah, you know, yeah. in parallel. And every time I saw a word that. Um, that didn't wasn't that was a different word, you know, yeah. like in the New King James and the King James. I looked it up in the Strong, and every um, all like ninety nine point nine percent of the time, it was the word that was in the New King James and not the King James. Ah, so, go figure. Yeah. So that was, you know, to me that was kind of a, you know, because I I don't like reading the King James. It's just too hard for me to understand, you know. And yeah, it was written yeah. at a time when people spoke that language, I guess, but. You know, I like the New King James because it's, it's, it seems more. It's um, more readable. You know, easier to read. Yeah. 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 But I also like the fact that they capitalize the words that, um, you know, I just feel like they reverence God more. You know, in the yeah. with the Amen. pronouns and Amen. stuff. But that's just my own. Yeah. And I was talking to my mom, and she says she feels the same way. Yeah, you know, so but you know, I just yeah, I like it. it. I like it when they use a pronoun and turn it into a personal pronoun. Yeah. That yeah, and then capitalize for it Jesus, for God. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. And I, 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 I just think that death is death and sin are both part of that Ephesians six kingdom, the angels, the principalities, and rulers of the darkness of the age, and they're the ones that talk to us and affect us. You know, because there's, you know, people, there's people that have like a spirit of death. With that's when they want to commit suicide. They cut themselves, stuff like oh, that. Yeah. That's kind of like a spirit of death that they have that they really need to be freed from mm -hmm. and you know sin is just <laughs> it just is we listen to it all the time yeah <laughs> come on you really yep. want to do it you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's then satan is the liar right yeah, yeah he's the father yeah. of lies and that's what he does it all, so yeah yeah but uh well praise god well i see ivan's here with us but i i wonder if julie's doing okay i know she wasn't feeling really well uh lately so Oh, and uh, I did get a text from Sherry. Uh, oh, Julie says she didn't get an email from me today. Oops, I missed that. Sorry. Hopefully, Yvonne, you're hearing me. But Sherry says, uh, Howard and Amber are COVID negative, and I got a normal on my pap smear and mammogram. Oh, good. Praise God. 
uh, pray for Howard and their relationship be closer. Okay. She wants a marriage. Have, have you yeah. received your, your first COVID test or are you through? You're done. I, I've got my first shot. I get my next shot on Friday. Cool. How are you feeling? Huh? I, feel, I think I feel okay. Yeah. But I had the Pfizer. You're still a good man, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, you go turn to the dark side. <laughs> He's not growing any Wolfman hair, right? Yeah, I, I haven't seen a mark show up on my forehead or on my, my right hand yet. So, <laughs> the deceiver is busy, brother. Hey, Amen. He is busy. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, but uh, yeah, I, I don't understand why Julie didn't get a test. But anyway, I'll have to check with her and see what happened. I'm back on the call on the email list. I finally received one from you last night at midnight. Yeah, I moved so, you around in the email list. I wonder, I'll have to check and see if Julie ended up at the bottom and see if maybe the bottom causes a problem. But okay, I'll have to check on that. But um, okay, well, that's our study for tonight. Um, any final questions, comments, additions, subtractions, disagreements? Yeah, hey. Did you have something, Bobby? Yeah. Um, earlier when we first started, he said something. It says, you were saying that only God knows, you know, when the world's going to end. But I was actually always told that not even Jesus knows when it's going to end. It's just going to happen one day. Well, when Jesus was on earth, uh, his disciples asked him, when will, the, when will this be? When will it happen? And he said, no one on, uh, in heaven or earth knows except my heavenly father. But see, that was because when Jesus was here on earth, he gave up a lot of his glory to come down and become a human being. So he didn't have, God wasn't giving him full access. He didn't have full reign to everything. And so, but when he, when Jesus went back to be with the father, in other words, the unity was back. He had paid the price. He had done everything that God had sent him to do. Then he's back united. He, he knows everything along with the Father and the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's not like there's separation like God, uh, Father says, I know this, but I'm not going to tell you, Jesus. I have none of your business. Uh, he doesn't do that. That doesn't happen. God, okay. the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, no. But when he was here as Jesus, that's when he made that statement. Yeah. Okay. Then. Yeah. So any other questions, comments? Okay, well, I've got, like I said, I have some prayer items here. I want Donna to get healed. So we're going to join the Lord and agree that she's going to be healed. Um, Misty is uh, dealing with her fibromyalgia. And she also has a stomach bug. We're going to pray for that. And then her mom woke up and wasn't feeling well. And uh, like I said, Sherry um, has her prayer requirements. And uh, we want to praise the Lord that you know, the two that had the COVID problems, Howard and her other daughter, uh, her other daughter's name is, um, come on. Amber? Amber, 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 yeah. Our, uh, both have gotten clear bills of health. So uh, clear bills of health. So praise the Lord for that. And Sherry just wants prayer for her relationship with Howard maybe even marriage so we'll pray about that and we're praying uh julie and family because they were still praying for that her daughter uh vangelis and her son uh vangelier so vangelis and vangelier anybody else other prayer items okay well, let's go ahead and pray, and uh, we'll pick up in Revelation 21 next week, and so have your questions ready, because I guarantee you that if you look into these, you know, some of these study Bibles or something like that, you'll find some things that will stir up some questions and make you say, well, what about this? How does this work? So, yeah, just uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump into that next week. So let's go ahead and Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for an opportunity to come together and study your word. We praise you for the fact that you are in control and that your plan is perfect 
And even if we don't have full clarity in what's going to happen, we know that you, Lord God, are, are, have a plan and a purpose in it all, and it will be awesome, and you will get the honor and the glory for it. And that is what's important. And what we also look forward to is being with you and ruling with you and just having, uh, you know, just finally get to a place where sin is not an issue anymore. And we, we, will, we will be able just to love you unconditionally and serve you unconditionally in a way that honors and glorifies you without any problem with this flesh or this sin. And we look forward to that, Lord, at that time when we can finally get there and say, man, hallelujah, praise you, Lord. Uh, even though we say it now, Lord, I didn't want you to think that we're not doing it now. So, Lord, <laughs> I pray for Donna, Lord. You know what malady and what bug she's got that's causing her problems. But we agree that you, Lord God, or Jehovah Rapha, God healer, and you know what Donna's dealing with. Please put your healing hand on her and free her from whatever malady she's experiencing, Lord, and just bring her back to full health. And we believe and we claim it, Lord, in your precious name. Also pray for Misty and, you know, the pain she's dealing with in her fibromyalgia and also the stomach bug. Lord, again, also put your healing hand on her and just remove those, those painful issues she's dealing with, Lord. And just bring her back to health as well. And also pray for Misty's mom who woke up not feeling well. Just for all of them, Lord, just put your hand on them and give them, give them respite from the, you know, these problems that we're dealing with in this body. Nothing's impossible for you, Lord, because you're the one that knit these bodies together in our mother's womb. You know them better than anybody and you know what maladies are in place. And there is nothing impossible for you. So we accept that you will do and heal just like you said you can and will. And so we accept that. I, I want to praise you, Lord, that Sherry mentioned that uh, Howard and Amber have been given a clean bill of health. Thank you for that, Lord. And Sherry wanted us to pray too, Lord, and we lift it up to you. She would love to have a relationship with Howard. Lord, we put that in your hands and we ask, Lord, that you just work that out according to your perfect plan and purpose. And we leave that in your hands, Lord, and we praise you for it. I want to pray for Julie and Ivan and their family that you would be with them. Please, you know, give Julie health. I know she didn't react very well to the second uh, COVID Pfizer shot, but Ivan didn't have a problem with it. But Lord, we just pray that you put your hand on her and, and just you know, heal her from any after effects from that COVID shot, that she would just be in, in good health and, you know, able to overcome that. Also pray for uh, Evangelise as she's doing with, I guess, a sprained ankle that she got while she was doing her army physical fitness training, that you would just heal her, Lord. And I pray for Evangelia that you would be with him and give him peace uh, with the issues he's dealing with, with uh, his ex-wife and uh you know his god we look to you for all of these things lord we pray for our nation we pray for our leaders and we lift you up Lord, and just honor and glorify you in everything we thank you that you love us so much that you have given us your son and that's what we celebrate this time of the year but hopefully we're doing it every day that you came to this earth you died for us and that you rose again on the third day and because of your sacrifice in carrying out the Father's will, we all have, uh, you know, the opportunity to come into relationship with you and have salvation. And Lord, in the process, we are cleansed and have forgiveness of all our sin. Thank you for that, Lord Jesus. We can't even begin to thank you enough for all that you do for us. Now be with us as we go, I pray. I, I pray you bless us, give us peace and all that we're doing. Let us be a witness and example, not only to those outside the house, but also in our families as well. And that you get the honor and the glory for and through it all. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Ted. Have a good evening. Hey, enjoy Easter service tomorrow for those who are going. Amen. Amen. Praise Indeed. God.
We have a much to celebrate. Hey, Amen. Yes, we do. I'm telling you. So I watch. I watched the Passion last night. Oh, that's yeah, I, 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 you. Wow. good movie. It yeah. is. Yeah. It is. I'll tell you what, and Pretty it falls way short of what Jesus fully did for us. Imagine, huh? Yeah. Imagine the, exactly. That's what I said when I watched. It. Yeah. You know, you know, it's, it's sad because <laughs> we 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 take it for granted. It's like, oh, today I don't feel like going to church. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's raining. You know, it's like, whoa, what Christ has, has done for us in uh, the Sabbath. I'm That's telling you. You walk out of there and you feel like, I'm never sinning again. <laughs> yeah. Right. Of course we do, <laughs> but. The thing is, we, we as a Christian, we, we take it so lightly. Like, yeah. we, we, it's, it's like we don't take us seriously. Yeah, we need to be. Yeah, we need to. I agree with yeah. you, brother. Like we, yeah, because we. You know, I guess maybe because we are so comfortable in America. I don't know. I, I think that's a big part of it. I really do. Yeah. We, we, we basically don't have any means. You know, we have <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Sick and all that. When it comes to material things, we, we got more than enough. Yeah. Good point. Good point. On that note, good night, everybody. Hey, I'll... good night, Aaron. God bless you, brother. Hey, God take care. You. God bless Give everybody. Love to the have family. a good night. We'll do. Happy you Easter. Hope you're feeling better, Donna. Thank you. Know. you. Donna, you some uh, tea with ginger, honey, all that good stuff. <laughs> no, we're just drinking some chamomile tea with honey in it. So how about ginger? You like ginger? I've got some ginger. I'm gonna I'm gonna get it out and chew on it right now. All right. <laughs> that's yeah. good stuff because that's the only way to overcome that. Seems like you have like a head cold. Yeah, it's some sort of sinus thing. I don't know. It's but it's in my lungs too. I'm coughing and just it's just not fun. Yeah. So. Oh, I hope you feel better. I was just praying that we'd get some rain last week because all that Me pollen. Too. It's the po I think pollen is a big. You're right about contribute. that. And that's the problem. We having any rain. Uh -huh. oh. yeah, just, we need some uh, rain so that we don't get all this pollen in the air. I mean, look at look at your car when you go out there. It's like full of this <laughs> garbage. Yeah. Yeah. You turn on yeah. your windshield wipers and you see mud running down your car. You yeah, know? I'm surprised trees haven't started growing out of my car with all that pollen. <laughs> this this is like one of the worst the worst year. I think and, so. Uh, it, has to, it has to do with this because we had any, any rain. That's right. That's we yeah. had one shower like two days ago, but that was it. Yeah. Yeah, we need we need way more than that. Yeah. I've yeah. been we praying for it. Yeah. Yeah. Take all that away. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, you guys take care and have a happy Resurrection Sunday. You, you too, Donna. Blessings, my you sister. Too. You too, Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Bye -bye. Hope you feel better. Bye, Amen. Thank Amen. you. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye. All right, Ted. Good Listen, night, Martin. Great Got class. It. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot of mystery. But oh, big time. <laughs> big time. In, in place where all the events that's happening. It's like a movie. <laughs> it, right. is. Hey, it is. There's different opinions stuff like that, but it's all good. So that's it. Like you said some people concentrate so much, and yes, what's the word? It's got it's got it's a lot logical. Yeah. Events that yeah. they get to their head, they start setting up days and so on. And, yeah. 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 You know, I try not to go that far. So. Amen. We need to know it. We need oh, to yes. know it. We need to but, know it. That yeah. is the basic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. But we don't need to get so wrapped around the actual. It's not going to change the fact that we are already in Jesus Christ. Know, because saved. People are, as you can see, yeah. people now start saying, oh, uh, this vaccine is already the mark of the beast. <laughs> obviously, they don't know the, the steps then. The, 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 uh, That's right. That's because right. if you were to know, obviously, it's, it's impossible that it could be. So That's at right. least that much we need to know so you don't start speculating. Amen. Oh, this is the Antichrist. This yeah. is this guy. I mean, come on. Yeah. Oh, oh, because we have our earthquake. Oh, this is the, the signs are right This there. is it. This, Jesus yeah. is coming tomorrow. <laughs> we have many earthquakes we have in the past. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. Anyway. All right. Take good night. Okay. Take give care. love to Wendy, my brother. Thank you. Good night. Hey, Corey. Take care, my brother. Good night, Ted. Good night. And you have a great week, brother. Thanks. And a great Easter. God bless. Bye.